Hello, my friends. Hello, my friends. How are you? Another day in the office here, as you can see. And uh, today we are going to be trying some exercises to improve uh, parallel table tennis uh, moves and also some uh, diagonal uh, forehand top spins and backhand top spins. So it's going to be an intense uh, session. And uh, just always before we start, it's very important. Uh, we do some exercises in order to uh, be able not to get injured, to avoid injuries. And uh, basically, the most important thing, because you, before you start every single session, is uh, doing some extensions using this rubber here. Very good choice. Okay. Most of the times I do around uh, 15 to 16 reps in the forehand. It's very useful. In every single hand. Okay. And uh, our tip hard Robo Pro Genius is ready. Sometimes I do a lot of uh, roping as well, but uh, today I am already ready. So give me one minute and I'll be right back and uh, get ready for action. So, hello again. Thank you for joining this live streaming. Our aim in our GRE78 channel is to be able to do live streaming uh, quite often. Uh, this is something that is very important in order to build the relationship between our channel and you, our community. Uh, of course, uh, we are not professional level players, but uh, we are doing our best in order to have uh, some exercises that can be performed from amateur table tennis players near the professional level uh, styling. Uh, so, let's get ready. As you can see, this is W968, the best lead in the world by far. And as you can see, you can understand how tacky this blade is. It's extremely tacky. Let's have a look. It's unbelievable. This is what I love. Can you, can you imagine? Look, look here. This. Perfection. Perfection, my friends. Perfection. What else can you say? This is the beauty of table tennis. If somebody tries professional top equipment from DHS, he's never going to look back. 
Never. Uh, since the beginning, I have tested, tested a lot of gear, but nothing beats this feeling. I mean, look. What can you say? Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. This is unseen. And these rubbers, they need to be changed. And these are the same rubbers the goat Manlong is using. And exactly the same blade. Okay, so uh, let's start off today with doing some uh, pushes. Most of the times I try to do a little uh, pushing in order to be able to warm up. So, this was uh, a good warm up. Today we are going to do some exercises uh, down the line and cross court. And we are going to start off from the forehand side and then we are going to progress slowly from this side in the middle and here. And this is very important, basically once a week, to be able to focus in different aspects of your game. Uh, all the players we have advantages and disadvantages in our game. And basically, sometimes it's very good to do very good to do precision training. Okay. So. We we'll pick up the balls and we are ready to start. I hope you are enjoying this 100% live streaming. And I think now it's better. I inserted an overlay for you. So we are going to go in number 11, which is there. Select our landing spot to be in the corner. 
and uh, we're going to use the maximum frequency and the bottom uh, wheel speed will be in number four. Remember, this is Tip Hard Robo Pro Genius. Uh, this machine has been used by all the older table tennis legends and is still being used by even the top professional players because it is very well built and it has very good quality and uh, it's very good to be able to train uh, and it's not that much expensive and it definitely worth the money okay let's start off now Now, if I did some pushes, sometimes, you know, when you get the ball, uh, is it possible, it's very possible sometimes you'll be able to cut it rather than doing a top spin uh, or a flick, okay? Uh, sometimes I do prefer to cut the ball. It's very difficult then for the opponent to answer. Now, uh, if you lower the frequency, okay, a little bit, in number seven, you can do this exercise here. Now, as soon as you change the frequency, this means basically you can move very fast. And of course, sometimes in the game is necessary, but be aware that in a matter level, sometimes if you move extremely fast uh, it's dangerous you lose some points you wouldn't lose if you were more stable but in the top level these exercises they have to be performed correctly moving on the table, so if you put the same frequency, 
if you put the same frequency, the bottom wheel speed is 4 and the frequency is 4. Let's have a look now with this exercise, how this exercise develops. Okay. One minute within our rubbers, always. Very important. Of course, cleaning the rubbers with uh, special chemicals in between the sets or game is strictly prohibited, so don't do it, okay? So, Are you saw sure this exercise with a parallel down the line? It's not easy. And very difficult for the opponent to block this forehand top spins with the Chinese rubbers because they produce a massive amount of spin, speed and power so it's very difficult to block these down the line balls Okay, so let's go again. Now this exercise, while you move, requires very good physique. <coughs> so I think now we are okay with the forehand. And we're going to go doing some backhands. I 
as soon as you decrease the frequency the movement changes a little bit okay but for today my aim is not to be able to move around in this session the aim is to be able to stay in a position constant and improve some small details needed okay so it's very useful to be able to move and that's why we are doing a lot of exercises but sometimes it's unnecessary and uh, if you are moving a lot you might lose some balls you wouldn't lose so let's increase now the frequency and go and do some very more constant We are very good in the cross court, and now our aim is to do minimum 30 to 35 without losing any single, any single ball. We did beforehand 37 to 39 cross court backhand flicks. In the beginning, we did some pushes and some forehand top spins. In the cross court game, is easier to be able to to hit with the correct speed the ball uh, on the table, but it's easier for the opponent to attack. But when you are doing down the line, when when you are playing down the line or parallel, uh, it's much more difficult for you in order to hit the ball correctly, in the correct position on the table and of course it's much more harder for an opponent 
Okay, so we finished the exercises in the cross court. Now we are going to go down the line or parallel. Okay, one minute. And then we are going to do the same thing again, the same exercises in the other areas. I'm not satisfied, so I'm going to do the backhand top spin down the line exercise again, and then we are going to move forward. I try to set very high standards for myself. As I said to you before, I don't care to win a game if I don't play well. I prefer losing if I don't play well. Our aim is to be able to go all the way and play well. Okay? Thank <laughs> you. 
One final. This this corner here is very difficult to learn, and it's very also difficult for the opponents because no opponent can imagine, but you can play from here a very strong backhand there or there. Of course. When you are doing this move, okay, if you play from the forehand side, a backhand, okay, you have to be prepared to move fast. If you stare watching from here, you have no time. So basically, you hit and you move straight. Remember it, but in a matter level, it's very, very difficult for the opponent to return a ball. Definitely, but you have played well from the forehand side with your backhand. But if you give a weak ball or a slow ball, you are risking. You are risking in giving in giving to the opponent the opportunity, the opportunity to attack. My coach always suggests to me not to play so much this move uh, from the forehand side because it's very uh, unconventional move but sometimes I think out, I think out of the box, and uh, since it basically works 70% for me, you know, I do it. It depends on the opponent and on the day I am, because in order to perform this move well from the from the forehand from your forehand side to perform the backhand, this means. You have to be in excellent form and condition, not only as far as uh, athletic performance has to do, but also in your state of mind, you know. And the good thing is that if you perform this exercise with a backhand from your forehand side, it's unexpected for the opponent, so it's very difficult for him to answer. And even if somebody, for example, sees the way I play, and uh, a lot of players invest a lot of times, and I'm very happy, they follow our channel and they see how I play, so suddenly I haven't played with them at all, and I go in the tournament and I see them, but they expect 
from me the ball to go there. Of course, what they don't know is that I cannot imagine uh, that sometimes I do it on purpose because, you know, in table tennis, you have to expect the unexpected. So basically, everybody says, okay, uh, one player has very good backhand, so he's not playing forehand. And you never know because some players will do it on purpose. So in one game, they play top forehand. In another game, they play not so good in the forehand side, and they play with the backhand, their backhand. And basically, if it's very important always to watch videos, instructional videos and a lot of games, but be aware that when you are watching a video, the person who is playing is not the same person that you are going to face, because he has also played and watched his video, he saw his mistakes, and he knows that you also watched his video. So, the truth is sometimes in between. And recently, I played in uh, an elite tournament and I won without doing a single backhand top spin from the forehand side, which is one of my favorite moves. Everybody was expecting me to do it, I knew it, so I changed my game. That's why this is the beauty of table tennis. Nobody can go in your mind, you know, if you are creativity, if you have creativity, you can perform very nice and good quality things. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit here and then going in the middle. I don't relax if I don't achieve correct an exercise and now this area has been completed very well. So now we're going to pick up the balls and move on in the other areas. We have we have uh, 
in the middle, we have a backhand corner, a few good balls. Sorry for uh, a little bit delay. I want to communicate with you the right way. And believe me, this is table tennis training reality. It's a good idea for you if you love table tennis. You can has a robot and you train a lot. It's very good also, table tennis. It's very good for our health because it improves our reaction a lot. And it is very useful in order to avoid car accidents, you know, and uh, basically to prevent future problems with your health. It's very good. Okay. So now we're going to put in number six. Select uh, in number six. Remember also that we are able to do in number 11. I show you a little bit now. We can put in, uh, if we put in any place and we can put uh, in higher bottom wheel speed, we can put a long and short ball. So let's see how it works. This exercise now I just did. Uh, it was a long ball, a long to short ball variation. It's very useful in order to be able to play push or flick near to the net. And then as you move, you go back, remember? And you go back. This is the the, pro the proper movement, okay, the proper movement is if you do it, all these exercises much more slower. But, but, in order to be able to play a lot of balls and to improve your agility and fitness, some people say you have to play it as fast as possible and then sometimes you do it slowly, okay? But the proper thing is to go here, okay, and you push, you move back, and then again, okay? So, you go, you move back, and then again. Go, push, back, this means, back. You do less balls, and basically, sometimes, this is not very good, because you are not focusing so much in hitting proper, properly the ball, you are focusing more in just placing it on the table. So, there are two factors. Precision, in order to be able to have precision, you have to be constant and hit some specific areas. And if you want to go to have a lot of agility and move, it's very difficult to combine both, okay? So, I don't believe a, a lot of people in the world can achieve both at 100%. And basically, it's much more difficult, okay? So, let's move now into number six. Because our aim is to be able to focus on precision. 
And then, depending on your opponent, you have to be able to move. Let's see the boss right here. Okay. Let's go now in the middle, and here we're going to do some balls. So we have to do See now the similar exercise again backhand flick with forehand spin, forehand uh, top spins, and we are receiving bottom wheel speed. Okay, let's focus now. You see just this move here is deadly if you do it competition. It's very difficult for your opponent to get it. Okay, but you have to be able to move fast. Okay. But of course, if you are moving extremely fast all the time, you are not going to succeed with this ball. Because it's very difficult. That's why we have to combine movement and precision. Remember, movement and precision. Not 100% one and we leave the other. There has to be a balance. Okay? Oh, oh. 
Walaupun di video ini sampit Git khusus So we did very well the middle, which is difficult aiming from the middle to the middle. It's not easy. Down the line, straight down the line in the middle is not easy. And now I'm going to do five minutes more maybe in the middle, and then we're going to move in the back and side doing similar exercises. So it's very, very important. So remember always, you are going to, you have to try and practice under spin and top spin. Okay? some balls.
We have to do it again. This exercise. A little bit. Because I noticed a problem. And I am about to solve it, you know. By not moving so much in the backhand, in the middle, have to be a little bit more stable. We finished the middle, very good, and now we are going in our last exercise regarding, regarding the underspin, okay? Remember that the total amount, the minimum amount of our session 
with a table tennis uh, robot drops from three hours if you are in a club and basically with a coach the same exercises uh, with similar frequency of course need more than three hours so basically if you learn the basics and you use a combination between a robot training partner machine I would say with one minute with uh, your coach you can save a lot of valuable time and uh, that's why this is what I love about this sport but of course it's very important to have guidance from uh, the coach and to be able to see if you have improved while using a robot machine because if you don't use properly a robot machine maybe you, you destroy your whole table tennis game but, but if you follow the exercises your coach says to you then you save valuable time and money of course because it's different to be able to do every single day three or four hours with a coach and you have here your place you are doing one hour to two hours training per day and then you visit to your table tennis club once or twice a week and you see what improvements you have to you have to do and the coach will guide you then if you are on the correct on the correct path or not okay so now let's move in position number two okay basically this is the easier spot i would say for most of the players uh, this place here okay and we finished from the hard exercises and now this this place here is much more easier i would say to perform exercises because all the time you are doing counter attacks and while warming up in the matches everybody's playing you know cross court from your backhand side to his backhand side okay so it's, it's, it's uh, easier let's go is easier a little bit because most of us we are used to playing from this side of course you must not under underestimate the whole uh, place is here
We do forehand top spin from this corner. Okay, forehand top spin, and we are ready with this part with the under spin. And then we are going to basically I'm going to change the t-shirt, drink a little bit of water, and I'll be right back after I finish this exercise. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you liked it. At least this is 100% reality. And I think you have noticed the improvements since I started playing table tennis back again after a lot of years. If you see, if you watch my games, if you watch my games since the beginning, basically you will see a very big difference. And I train a lot, I respect the sport a lot, I respect my opponents, okay? And uh, every single thing in this sport, creativity, this is what I like. You are able to create your point and this is very important you know, in the sport, to be able to get, to get your own style. Uh, so let's do again. Thank <laughs> you. 
ಆಮೇಲೆ So now we finished with the under spin precision training. Okay. Uh, we did all around the table from this place, from the forehand side to the middle to the backhand. Uh, if you have noticed, a lot of balls were not hitting exactly on the same point. And this is on purpose. Why? Because when you go uh, to play a competition in a tournament, then there's no way somebody will give you exactly the same ball here. He will give it 10 centimeters closer or in a different area. So if you leave the competition balls a lot of time in the training tip car machine because these are coming to you with pressure uh, sometimes they are not 100% uh, uh, circular so there is a little bit deviation which is very good for your reflexes and this is something that uh, I have learned it and uh, it's very important not to be able to rest while you are playing. You have to be able to rest only your hand, but not your mind. You have to not know that the ball is going to come here, because there has to be a little bit deviation from here to here, and this helps for your reflexes. So, we're going to do a break for five minutes. Less basically, and I'll be right back.
notice, I am back. As you have, as you have noticed, my friends, in the forehand with the other thing, I did half of the move due to the fact that there were we had very very fast, very maximum frequency. This means in the maximum frequency that we are not going ever to witness at least in uh, real, I would say, uh, competition. Nobody is going to play a ball to you as fast as with the maximum frequency I played. And I performed the exercise with the forehand top spin. But as I said earlier, this improves a lot the reflexes. And because a lot of times, most of the times, I don't do it with maximum speed in order to be able to complete 100% much more better the exercise in the forehand. Uh, now, in our top spin exercises, because we are going now to work with the top wheel speed, I will reduce a lot the frequency in order to demonstrate you that when you reduce the frequency, you are performing much more better the exercise and much more correct, but, but you are losing a little bit in the reflexes area. And sometimes for me, uh, it's very important to work on reflexes as well during the table tennis training session. Because I believe that you have to be prepared because you never know what the opponent might return you and how fast uh, his ball might be. But the 100% correct way is to do the movement slower, okay? But this, for me, uh, sometimes it slows me down. But of course, the correct way is to be able to perform correct exercise, but sometimes do fast movements as well in order to perform uh, and improve your total agility and reflexes. So in the first part, we did the forehand top spin exercises using the bottom wheel speed from the robot. I performed the exercise on purpose faster than I should have done in order to give you the reality and in order to explain you what you are going to do when you are starting improving and using a robot machine because everybody wants to go higher and higher and uh, use more frequency faster faster and faster this doesn't mean you are going to be playing so fast with nobody but but if you are used in playing in so i would say extreme conditions so fast so powerful this means that mentally you are ready for everything so if you can control the pace your pace while you are playing and you know how to perform correct the forehand top spin but on that specific day you also proved to yourself that your reflexes work 100 percent but you have agility you are able to do to move fast then the opponent 
might expect the unexpected from you. Because everybody believes that uh, you cannot rewrite some rules, but as the past has taught to all of us, some of the top level players worldwide had their unique uncanny style. And basically, they knew all the moves, all the movements, correct, but they had this extra personal touch in their game that made them different. So now, let's start off top wheel speed. And now we're going to put it very low, the frequency. Okay? And we're going to be playing in number 11. And this part is always faster than the other part. So let's start off slowly to see. And I'm going to increase very little level level. level. This is not going to Thank <laughs> you. 
We're going to slow down the frequency more. A little bit. Let's have a look now to see the difference.
I don't know if you notice the difference with the sound. Now I'm using much more wrist. Okay. The other have some uh, smashing on them. This is here is mostly spin. You can hear it from the sound. But sometimes during competition it's very important to be able to change in between in order to mess up your opponent because if somebody listens this, he thinks but you don't know how to speak. So it's good. You can make it on purpose. It's very good. Okay? This is different. This is massive. And this is your spin. It's massive. It's massive. And your spin. It's massive. Smashing and we spin. Smashing. Spin. And there are a lot of players. There are a lot of players out there. You see the ball I just caught? This ball I just caught right now, one minute ago. I wouldn't be able to catch this ball. If I didn't do these exercises, sometimes top frequency. So don't underestimate the fact of playing top frequency. As long as you know to do the proper move 100%. But the improvement you get in your reflexes might give you a win in a crucial moment. When you come back, after your opponent blocks, and suddenly you save a similar ball. What I just showed you before was that I did forehand top spin. Okay? In the beginning, if somebody is watching the video, basically he understands, but I don't know how to do a forehand top spin. This is very, very good because when he will play against me, basically he will think but I'm only doing smashing. But when you're playing in a game, there are a lot of players who don't know how to respond when somebody is doing a very strong smash. And it's easier for them to attack if somebody is doing a very strong top spin. So all the time again, you have to have variation. You have to be able to do the stroke, smashing, or using more wrist. And this is something that will make the opponent wait the unexpected. And basically, it will all depend on your style, how you are going to perform on the specific game. I have seen players I have encountered with winning tournaments without doing a single forehand topspin. They were doing forehand smashes. But they had the correct timing and basically the opponent didn't stand a chance against them. But the beauty of the table tennis sport is when you are reaching to the level to combine both of these moves when you want in your game. So this is the beauty, and this is what I'm trying to accomplish. And sometimes I have accomplished these uh, moves inside tournaments, okay? In the first set, maybe I was playing more uh, spins. In the second, smash. Depends on the opponent. Let's move now in the middle. 
we finished from the forehand side using the top wheel speed. Now we are going to be using frequency in the middle top maximum frequency. Okay. Again in the middle, all the trainer will say to you, but listen, you you are starting here, okay, you're doing a move, and then you have to move back, back. If you are moving in the in in the backhand corner and you do a fast uh, and you attack a fast ball from the middle and you are far here, you are risking a little bit because some people, for example myself, okay, I prefer turning like this from here in order then to be able to move faster here or here. But most of the people, they move from here, okay, they go here and then they block here. But what happens if somebody blocks the ball, okay, and they go here? It's very difficult from here to go there. So if you know you have a good backhand and you are playing here, you can block here and then move straight there. Again, this is unconventional, unconventional, but for me it works. And it works because I have very good agility and I'm doing a lot of exercises, lateral exercises. And sometimes I, the ball I give from this area, from the middle, is very difficult for the opponent to send it here. Most of the times the opponent will bring it here. So for me then, it's easier to attack with one step. While if I am here, okay, you have to do lateral uh, more, more steps, okay? But it depends on your style, okay? And sometimes, to tell you the truth, I am more forehand dominant player, and some of the times I am more backhand dominant players. It is the player. It depends on the way my training has been completed the previous days. If, for example, I feel very confident, sometimes I might, might play only using the forehand dominant tactic. And sometimes the backhand. And uh, I believe it's very good to be able to have both of the forehand and backhand strengths. Okay. Let's go now.
up in chest low. We finish the backhand, the backhand uh, training from the middle. We are going to do a little bit of backhand training from the middle, and then we are going to finish with the uh, backhand placement here. Okay. I know it's a long video, but I believe it's very good for you to know this training. And if you perform this training before a competition, one day before a competition, and of course you always have to combine the training with uh, training in service as well. It's very important to, to practice service training at least five times per week. Okay, it's very important. Sometimes I do it in the morning and in the evening I do my training session similar like this. Or sometimes the other way around and if sometimes I am uh, uh, out in the weekend and I have no time, then Monday morning I come very early sometimes and I train both. This practice program or similar like this and also I'm training the service training as well, okay? Thank <laughs> you. 
very good in the middle area. As you saw, as soon as I reduced the frequency, the whole game changed. Okay, but for me, since I do play a lot of similar moves uh, with a lot of players I encounter with, sometimes I try to go the, the difficult way, but of course, sometimes it's not always the correct way. But because definitely, if you start playing uh, with any robot, you are going to get addicted in the high frequency balls because it's very addictive, okay? It's a good addiction. Because as I said to you before, uh, table tennis improves a lot your reflexes and uh, you will see this definitely if you are going on a trip, long hour journey or you are very tired and the uh, driving will be very easy for you due to the fact that you are playing table tennis and your reflexes are uh, similar and maybe even better than the Formula One drivers. Remember, people with table tennis experience, because table tennis is the fastest sport on earth, we have extreme attention capabilities, and that's why uh, sometimes if you see in tournaments, even a small dis dis disruption from a flash uh, can create problems to the player, okay? Because he loses the focus in the optical view he has, okay? So now let's move on to number one. Again, we're going to start off with maximum frequency in the backhand, okay? Because in the backhand also, the movement is smaller, okay? And then we're going to go in the uh, lower frequency, frequency and we're going to finish off with our top hand. Okay, so let's start. I'm going to select number two.
switching from the backhand to the forehand. I believe it's very useful for the size. You're get, going to get the prayer for the second shot. Okay. Switching the side of the plate is very good. You want to be able to change the rubber in the smashes. Very important. In the high toss, in the high balls, you have to change the rubber. Thank <laughs> you. 
nominated the size. You can change the placement and you can place from two to seven. Okay, let's have a look. Okay. One minute, I load some balls. Just demonstrate you. It's very good exercise this as well. I think we have been shooting more than two hours. So actually this is like a five hour session. If you were about to do this session in a club, it would be very, very difficult, you know. That's why it's necessary to have your own space. It, it helps a lot, believe me, it helps a lot. Today I had no time to go to the club. And basically, I wanted to share my training session with you. Of course, all the secrets are inside the Bible, YouTube, but uh, I mean all the information for most of the things in our world are uploaded daily inside YouTube. But of course the problem is if somebody 
demonstrate you how to do something. When you try to do it, it's much more different, much more difficult. So you have to want it a lot in order to basically see a tutorial from YouTube and try to demonstrate this tutorial yourself. Try to follow these steps. It's not easy, believe me. And all the creators, they are putting a lot of work in their channels in order to grow up for our worldwide community. And a lot of information I share with you, I have learned them also from the web, from different sources. And of course, I have checked them out with coaches and uh, friends. Okay, let's do this final exercise. So as you just saw, now in the end, some balls I wouldn't be able to get to them if I wasn't playing sometimes fast, okay? Because I was definitely out of position, I was wrong, but my reflexes worked and saved the balls. One more. So this is it. Thank you very much, my friends, for watching this. And now, before we go, we finished playing. Of course, some people might be very tired. Basically, I have no time, otherwise I would continue with another session as well. I train a lot, daily, and uh, I try to be able to be fit enough to compete against the young guns we have here in Greece, top players we have. It's very, very difficult even to get a set out of them, okay? And we're talking about uh, amateur level. If we go in professional level, then it's a very difficult task, you know, to even get one or two points. So, after we finish. Please never forget to do the same exercises, stretching exercises we started with. Because if you don't do this, you are risking yourself on getting an injury. So, finished. You have no time to do rope exercises, or you might not like it, it's not good. It's not uh, bad not to prefer an exercise. For me personally, sometimes before tournaments, in order to warm up, I always do uh, rope exercises. But sometimes, if there is no time, the most important thing for me is this rubber with the two handles because it saves you from injuries, okay? So again,
You see, it's very important. It's very important to be able, straight after you finish your training session, or in between competition is very useful, in between competition, to be able to stretch. Also, always remember to clean your blade, okay? After you use it, you have to respect 100% your gear, your gear. Respect it. It's very important for you Thank you very much. I hope you liked our session today. We are going to create some new things as well for you in our channel. We are going basically to be creating uh, table tennis stories playlist and we are going to try to talk to the people that have influenced a lot the table tennis scene, not only as athletes, not only as uh, people that uh, are in uh, public uh, places, in uh, the positions uh, uh, that they are chosen from the public community, but also, we are going to talk with people that are loving this sport. They are doing it for a lot of years. And we are going to do something different and pass all this live streaming experience to you. And in order to do this, because we respect you 100%, you are the driving force behind our channel. We are going to create the best sound and uh, video experience ever as far as table tennis scene and uh, stories talking and uh, all these things have to do commentaries uh, so you're going to witness something that will be very good quality in sound in video and we are going not to do it in a way of me asking questions we are going to talk freely we're going to talk free without boundaries and we are going to uh, promote the nice way the table tennis scene worldwide we are going to do this uh, episodes, this live streaming, I would say, uh, discussions, stories in Greek language, because uh, most of the people, uh, they are not in a very good level, or at least in a good level, uh, as far as the English language has to do. And because I believe we have to pass uh, this information a lot to the Greek audience. Because most of the times, basically I try myself to speak in English. It's very difficult for me as well because I haven't uh, been using a lot uh, this language since I am here in Greece. But due to the fact that we have a lot of people outside Greece, a lot of subscribers, I believe it, it would be unrespectful to them if all the channel had everything in Greek language. So basically, for me, I try to improve. I do some mistakes sometimes. You know, live streaming is not easy. If somebody is laughing and say, OK, he did a mistake, I challenge him to come and speak like I, like I speak now, in between training session, 
in my place. But believe me, he's not going to come because it's not easy. Because a lot of faults have been happening from me in language. It's not easy. You block because you try to perform and speak as well. But this is the beauty of live streaming. And this is something that is going to be the call for, for the future. Because now, my friends, with artificial intelligence, a lot of things we are witnessing in the social media are fake. So that's why this is one of the reasons I like YouTube, for example, because for me it's the best community worldwide and the most reliable community for me. Uh, Google and YouTube, as far as reliability and the uh, community connection, they have no competition. They don't, they, they, they share the ideas about artificial intelligence, okay, and they, have, they are open minded, but they are placing the boundaries because they know that artificial intelligence, basically, uh, most of it, when used in video uh, creators or uh, in audio and all these strange things that are, are happening in videos, basically they destroy the reality because what the audience wants to see is wants to see mistakes, wants to see me talking with you, other people talking, communicating. So that's why the call for the future I believe, and I am 100% confident, will be live streaming as far as you respect the people you encounter with either when you are playing a match or your, uh, the people that you are doing uh, live streaming and they are your guests. I believe live streaming and special, uh, especially in YouTube is the goal for the future. So our aim is to be able to increase the live streaming videos and uh, try to promote table tennis from Greece worldwide. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe in order not to miss uh, our videos we are uploading daily. And see you in our uh, next video. Thank you. Thank you very much.